It's time now for an in-depth look at the global markets this afternoon. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, global strategist at Uanta Securities. Mr. Yu, thanks as always for coming on. Thank you for having me, as always. Well, today, uh, trade on Wall Street overnight, rather, was uh, mixed. Still not sure where the U.S. and China are going on trade, uh, despite some recent good news. Uh, stocks in Korea today up a fair bit. What's the story? Yes, as you said, um, U.S. market seems to be fairly volatile. Uh, if you look at the Dow Jones industrial average, it posted uh, its fourth straight gain on Monday uh, amid the more optimism regarding U.S.-China trade tensions. Uh, however, though, tech shares uh, were falling. Uh, that kept the index gains in check. Um, most of the indices were start to rise on the news that the China offered last week to increase purchases of U.S. Uh, agricultural goods if U.S. eased the restriction on telecom giant Huawei. And also China said that if uh, the U.S. delaying the higher tariffs on 250 billion won worth of Chinese import, then the purchase of the agricultural goods will happen. So all these things are contingent agreement. So we're not sure whether this will actually occur but uh, Stephen, uh, Secretary, uh, Treasury Secretary uh, Mnuchin said that the possibility of some kind of deal is likely. So that's uh, showing uh, that's the reason why the, the prices were uh, fairly reasonably okay. Uh, as for the Asian equity markets, it's fairly mixed on Tuesday. Uh, Chinese stocks have underperformed because the country's producers price index index fell 0.8%, which is one of the lowest numbers that we have seen uh, in three years. Um, so that's the reason why um, the, the price of the Shanghai Composite are down by 0.1% or so, uh, and the, uh, the Shenzhen Index is down by 0.4% or uh, uh, somewhat. And also for the Japanese market, uh, it seems to be rebounding. Um, by about 0.35 percent, um, the news on the Nissan Motors have uh, affected positively. Uh, uh, they're moving 3 percent plus. As for the Kospi, also it continues to rise by 0.6 percent, um, despite the uncertainty regarding the political arena. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, most of the Asian market seems to be doing reasonably okay upon the news that the trade deals might happen. Got it. Well, let's uh, talk oil for a second. Saudi Arabia says it's going to keep cutting production. Uh, a new oil minister there uh, apparently uh, trying to prop up the market a bit. Where do you see oil prices going? Yes, uh, as you said, that oil prices have been moving up uh, in the last four trading days. Upon the news that the OPEC will continue to have production limitations uh, or production cuts uh, that will last for, for the longer period of time. Um, the, the minister, oil minister, of, uh, uh, have said that uh, they will continue to uphold the agreement to reduce the productions. Uh, and also, uh, the Iraq, uh, the, the cartel's second largest oil producer behind Saudi Arabia, has always exceeded its output cap uh, almost every month for more than two and a half years now. And now the Iraq is saying that they're ready to be get on board about cutting the productions. So this is the reason why the oil price is moving up uh, in the last four days. So the OPEC plus alliance uh, fairly much uh, are saying that uh, the productions uh, will be down and that resulting into the oil price rise. Uh, but still, Russia's oil output in August exceeded its quota under the OPEC plus agreement. Uh, and the shale gas production by U.S. will continue to be showing a rising trend, uh, and they are the number one oil producer of the world now. So having said that, uh, continuation of continued production uh, capacity being raised, uh, that means the oil price is not going to go further up higher to the, the $70, $80 as we've seen before. Well, most likely the oil price will be range-bound somewhere between 50 to $60 in the future. 
Right. Well, uh, this year we see GDP growth uh, being revised down globally and here in Korea. And they say the economy here, the potential growth has uh, been falling for years, according to the BOK. How is the economy doing in Korea? And what's your near-term outlook? Well, clearly the economy is not doing well. Uh, most of the people are saying, and I agree, that Korean economy has entered a new era, so-called new normal of three lows. Uh, low growth, low interest rate, low inflation. Uh, it seems to be clearly these things are becoming realities. Um, the reason for all this is, is that uh, the, the labor side, the unemployment ratio is not falling uh, and uh, continuation of the disposable income growth being very low or actually negative territories is affecting consumers' consumption uh, not picking up. And also, because of the recessionary environment per se, uh, making the corporation not spending additional money for capex, and they're actually investing money overseas rather uh, than investing within Korea. So that's all affecting the overall growth rate to decline quite sharply. As you already know, that first quarter of this year fell shockingly by 0.4%, which is a contraction that we haven't seen in a very long period of time. And then it's the, the second quarter has recovered to 2% growth rate. But nevertheless, it's much below the intrinsic possible growth rate of Korea. Uh, we think that uh, the growth rate potential has declined, uh, and probably it's now around 2% territories, uh, which is slightly higher than U.S., but nevertheless, it is one of the lowest numbers that we are seeing. Um, and uh, until... Uh, some of the problems are solved in regards to the additional competitiveness uh, in, in the export arena as well as consumers' consumption areas. Uh, we're not going to see growth rate jumping to 3% or anything like that. Most likely over the next several years, Korea's growth rate will be remain at 2% to 2.5% range. Yeah, some eye-opening numbers coming out this week. All right, Mr. Yu, that's where we'll have to stop for today. Thank you for coming on. Thank you very much for having me.